April 8th, 2022. The Dallas Mavericks were hosting the Portland Trailblazers. Kyle Morris and his daughter went to the game just as they had many times before. We've had season tickets for the last few years. Their season tickets were in section 221, just below the suites. Morris says just before halftime, his daughter left her seat. She says she's got to go to the bathroom. And I'm like, okay, yeah, she's 15 years old. I'm like, we've been here countless times. And I'm like, go to the bathroom. That would be the last time Morris would see her that night. They say security cameras at the AAC captured what happened next. Less than two minutes after she gets up and walks out, the guy in the suite leaves the suite and goes down the escalator. The Morrises say these surveillance photos show the man walking and talking with their daughter. Brooke Morris says the girl was lured out of the building under false pretenses. Let's go hang out until the game's over and then, you know, you can get back to your dad. Back in section 221. Absolute panic. Kyle Moore says he was flagging down security officers, including an off-duty Dallas police officer. They searched the building but did not find her. I'm just like counting on these security officers to tell me what to do. I was following direction. Those directions were to report the 15 year old as a runaway, not in Dallas, but where the family lived, 30 miles away in North Richland Hills. There was a part of me that was like, why are you going home? You know, you know she's there somewhere. But then he said, well, that's what the police were telling me to do. Dallas police tell the I team that is standard operating procedure for parents to report runaways to their home jurisdiction. Say we live in Houston, say we live in a different state and we're just in town. They literally would have had us go file with our local. But it didn't happen in North Richland Hills. These individuals were not in North Richland Hills. They were in Dallas. Days turned into a week. Then a Facebook friend suggested the Morrises try a new tactic. Call this guy. He, he can definitely help you. We're in a fight, and it's a fight for time. J.B. Rice is the executive director of the nonprofit Texas Counter Trafficking Initiative, which is based in Austin. He asked us not to show his face to protect his ongoing investigations. He goes, send me a couple pictures of her. What identifying features she had, markings, tattoos, piercings, just the whole nine, height, weight. I'll call you back if I get anything. You know, okay, thank you so much. Didn't even think I would hear from him. But she did. He called back just a few hours later, around midnight. And he's like, I, I think I found something. He shows me these horrendous websites. And there she was. And my jaw just fell to the floor. Rice had combed through prostitution ads online. He found the 15-year-old in an advertisement in Oklahoma City. The post claimed she was 21, saying, I am here from Dallas visiting, looking for some company. And he said, this is actually a good thing. And I'm thinking, how, how is this a good thing? This is the most terrible thing I've ever seen in my life. How is this a good thing? He goes, because I know where she's at and I know how to get a hold of her. Rice managed to get in touch with Oklahoma City's vice unit early that morning. The Morrises say officers moved fast to find their daughter. Within three hours, they were able to figure out which hotel it was and they were able to plan an, uh, an operation to recover her within three hours. And mind you, this has now been a full week since the situation happened. Dallas police still hasn't even taken a report. Oklahoma City police pulled surveillance video from the hotel and saw the girl had been there, but she was gone by the time they arrived. It would be another two days before an officer spotted her walking down the street. He didn't even put two and two together because she didn't look like her pictures. But he said she stuck out like a sore thumb. The officer took her to the hospital, and that's where the family reunited for the first time in 10 days. Brooke says her daughter was shocked to see them come through the door. And I said, did you not think I would come for you? And she said, no, 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 no. She was, I didn't think you knew where I was. And that's when I found out she only had found out she was in Oklahoma, I think within the previous 24 hours. She didn't even know where she was. As soon as I walked in, it was, I mean, our daughter just, she just started sobbing. All I saw was, was like our four year old little girl laying in that bed. And when she was crying, I got up to her and I hugged her and she was hugging me and she said, Daddy, they hurt me. And she said, they took advantage of me. And she said, you were right about those times that we had talked to her about this type of stuff, you know, being a real thing to worry about. That 10 days of trauma has forever changed their daughter. 
Now they're hoping to save other teenagers from the same fate. Just be where you're supposed to be. Just be where you're supposed to be, where your parents think you're supposed to be, because these things can get so far out of your realm of control in an instant. Oklahoma City police have made four arrests in connection to the trafficking case there. Three of them have been convicted and are serving time. A fourth is awaiting trial. Doug? You as a mom, me as a dad, uh, and so many parents watching this can't, mm. can't even begin to fathom what transpired there. Talk to me, though, about the latest on the Dallas case, because they mentioned that. Is there any movement there? There has been some, Doug. Dallas made its first and right now only arrest in January. It's a 33-year-old man who is now charged with sexual assault of a child. Investigators say he was seen walking around the American Airlines Center here with the girl. At this point, he has not entered a plea, and we have not received a comment from his attorney. And in this case, a big thanks to private investigator and our public law enforcement as well for getting this young child back home. Ginger, thank you so much.